Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another review of another horror film from the year 1983. And this time it is Jaws 3. And yes, I do like the film. I know it's a much hated sequel. I disagree with that. For me, I think it's an entertaining film for a number of reasons. I like Dennis Quaid. I like Bess Armstrong as our two leads. Uh, I think the score is very well done. I think... Alan Parker did a wonderful job on the musical score. And before I go on, I mean, the first Jaws is an absolute classic. Uh, I've reviewed that on the channel. Jaws 2 is a solid sequel, although, sadly, a lot of the teen characters you just don't care about. It's, it seemed a bit too much was them on their trip on their boats or moving the boats back and forth. And this, I think there's certain scenes that could be cut out, and some of the teen characters could be a lot stronger. This one, I like the idea that it takes place at SeaWorld, and that Dennis Quaid plays Roy Scheider's son. Now, Roy Scheider, of course, is not in the film because he didn't even want to be in the second film, let alone be in the third. Uh, but yeah, Dennis Quaid, early in his career, like I said, plays one of Roy Scheider's sons. He works with Bess Armstrong at SeaWorld. Louis Gossett Jr. is in the film as the owner of the park. The production designer of the original Jaws, Joe Elves, he directed it. I don't think he did that bad of a job. I mean, considering other underwater and killer shark movies i'll take this over anything that sci-fi channel or the asylum gives us nowadays and i like the characters i think that's one of the reasons i like the characters i like dennis quaid's character even little bits when he's talking with his man he's like hey no overtime guys okay and he's right off as jesty no overtime no overtime yeah uh, his brother comes in. I thought Dennis Quaid and the guy who played his brother had some nice banter between the two. I thought Dennis Quaid and Bess Armstrong worked well together. Like I said, the, the music, I think, is great. Uh, underrated musical score, out, in my opinion. Leah Thompson, she has an appearance in this as one of the people who works at SeaWorld. And along the way, you get a couple people killed. One guy gets munched eating a gate. And you see their arm in front of you. And I guess I should get into the fact that this was released in 3D. Now, in retrospect, I wish it wasn't a 3D movie. Because I don't know if any of the Blu-rays or such you can see in 3D. Uh, you can let me know on that. But if that's not the case, then... Again, in retrospect, I think some of the effects would look a lot better if they didn't have to do the 3D gimmick. And that's one of my own personal flaws with the film, is that some of the 3D... Because they were doing 3D, some of the effects, like the arm, after the guy gets munched, it doesn't look in the same sequence as the shot. Uh, the worst offense is at the finale when the shark is coming towards the how I put it, the the area where Dennis Quaid and Bess Armstrong and Louis Gossett Jr. are in the little like control tower underwater and you see the shark moving and it's a horrible shot and the glass breaks and the glass the way it shatters is very fake and phony looking and that's easily the worst shot in the movie at least again in my opinion and if you didn't have to do with that 3D gimmick. I think it would have been a better effect. And scenes like that would not be the shit that the flies would go to when people make fun of the film. And I don't see why, how people compare this with Jaws 4. I think Jaws 4, they say, oh, which is worse, Jaws 3 or 4? I'm like, I'm sorry, Jaws 4 is not even the same dimension as J literally as Jaws 4. 
I, yeah, I think the task works better. The, the premise being in SeaWorld is better. Uh, the the music is better. The the pacing is better. I don't think it's as dumb compared to Jaws 4. Or as, as inept as Jaws 4. I say I like the characters. Dennis Quaid and Bess Armstrong. Uh, they mess with his brother and Leah Thompson when they're trying to make it in the water. And then they grab a bullhorn and they're giving the guy shit. You turkeys have any ID? You know, you're a trespasser on SeaWorld property. And they mess with him. But again, it's some f decent chemistry between the characters. Or like another scene after where Dennis Quaid and his brother are talking. And the, the brother goes, I was this close to doing in the water. And that's a first. And then Quaid is like, this close? And, you know, Quaid, even in the film like Jaws 3, he still has that charm to him. He's, Dennis Quaid is a, is a very solid actor. Um, there's a point where the characters get in a submersible and travel throughout the park. You have these two cute dolphins, Cindy and Sandy. Uh, it was cool to see dolphins in the mix in, in a Jaws film. And, you know, nothing wrong with dolphins. Dolphins are pretty cool. I also like the idea that, unlike other Jaws films, one of the, not really subplot, but the way it goes is that they actually try to capture the shark, and they do. Of course, they find out it's a baby shark, but they capture the shark, and it dies in captivity. I thought, okay, that's a different way of doing it. That's a different way of going. Uh, another guy I like the, in the film is a guy named Simon McCorkendale, I believe is his name. Uh, he's a guy who visits Louis Gossett Jr.'s character, and you get the idea that maybe he was a hunter, but also he's a photographer, and I can't remember if he was a hunter, but I know he was like a photographer. And he's not like a stereotypical bad guy. I think in another film he would have just been the typical douchebag bad guy. But he's not. And he even feels sorry for Buzz Armstrong when the, the shark dies. And you know he's not happy about it. Of course, like I said, there was a baby shark. And the mama shark is in the park. And she goes ape shit. It's sad to say, you have more chaos here than you do in The Maid. <laughs> a big budget, hundreds of... I, actually, I don't remember how much it cost. Millions and millions of dollars budget on the Meg. And there's more chaos in this film. Which is pretty sad and pathetic. And it fucks up Leah Thompson. And it fucks up these tunnels. So these people are trapped underwater. And it has probably the creepiest death scene I've ever witnessed in a shark movie. That's when a character doesn't get eaten, but he gets pulverized. We're literally, I, I, again, I just put myself in this character's situation and he's up shit. Creek. Literally, he's in the shark's mouth. And you're not even like the dignity of being, dignity, I know, of being eaten. You're literally pulverized and then stuck in the shark's mouth. And just the fact that you're, you're not far enough to be killed by the teeth quickly, but you're not back enough to be swallowed. You're literally just being pulverized and squished as the shark keeps trying to munch on you. And again, the, the way it was shot and the little groans you hear from the, the snorkel. And I just thought ever since I saw this as a kid, that was a really creepy death scene. Maybe I'm the only one that thinks that way. And, you know, the, the death of the shark was another explosion. Granted, a little bit of a twist with the, the guy still stuck in there. He's got a grenade that they pulled the pin on. At least at Jaws 2, they came up with a different death scene where they fry the shark. But again, uh, my only issue is... I mean, the, the Jaws films were never about body count. I will say the attack scenes... And the first two Jaws had a little bit more zest to them in the, the kill sequences. 
you know, the, the beginning of Jaws, of course, when the, the little kid gets, gets killed later on. And Jaws 2, when the guy gets dragged to the boat and he's hanging on and he's pulled down so forceful, piece of the wood, piece of the boat breaks. So as in, uh, the attack scenes are not as, again, intense compared to the first two. Except that one death scene, I'll say, that one death scene. Uh, at the end when the guy just pulverized. And the 3D, maybe if I'm able to see it in 3D, it'd be fine. But since most people on VHS, DVD, whatever, would see it this way, it just comes off as bad and hokey. It just makes you in retrospect go, just don't do it in 3D. Just make a Jaws 3. I know the original idea was actually do a parody, Jaws 3 People 0. And perhaps uh, Joe Dante was going to direct it. Which that would have been interesting. Which hell, they could have done that with Jaws 4. I would say keep Jaws 3 and then Jaws 4 do that. Jaws 4 people 0. Uh, I think that would have worked out better than the Jaws 4 we got. But yeah, I, I know I'm alone in this. A lot of people hate Jaws 3, teach their all. But I, I always thought it was a bit underrated. I thought it was fun. Like I said, I like the music. I like the characters. I like the setup. I like the fact that it takes place in SeaWorld. Thought it made it a little bit different. Uh, I like I, I some of the banter with the characters. The the dolphins were cute. And like I said, this is probably the creepiest death scene I've witnessed in a, in a shark movie. Because I can't think of another death scene in a shark film that creeped me out more than that. But anyway, that's just my thoughts, my review of Jaws 3. Uh, thanks for watching, take care. And yeah, this DVD doesn't even have anything, no features. Doesn't even have the making of from back in the day, which you find, at least at one point it was on YouTube, I don't know anymore. Uh, go figure. But thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you guys later. Bye-bye.